Greetings, dear friends. Today, in Alatra TV studio, we have the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, today we would like to talk on the subject of gaming addiction. Consciousness of very many of our viewers will basically say that this topic definitely does not concern them, as they are not gamers, and their loved ones are seemingly not addicted to this, and there aren't actually that many pathological gamers in the world. However, I would like to understand, is this really so? It's interesting that once he told us that this three-dimensional world is very similar to a computer game, which is, let's put it this way, written by a very experienced programmer. And today we would very much like to draw this parallel between these two illusory worlds and to understand, haven't we people, our entire humanity, become too absorbed in a computer game? Well, the world is in fact one. It's just that, let's put it so, there are also other realities in our reality. Or, simply speaking, there are additional illusions in our illusion. So the system fractally immerses a person exactly Surely. from one illusion to another, deepening to a more and more complicated level. Well, I wouldn't say that it's more and more complicated. The more complicated levels are exactly for those who play computer games. There are a lot of levels there, yes. You have passed one level, and you are given a more complicated one, that which was written by programmers. Well, and a person always seeks to pass the most complicated levels and forgets about life in this illusion. So, this is also a key point, that if we actually look at the modern world, then it turns out that the majority of people, they are so dependent on these written scripts, emotionally dependent on these, well, multiple addictions, such as family, job, recreation and entertainment, that it appears that… Now, you have interestingly touched upon the topic of recreation, family and everything else. For example, we know many people, right? Well, everyone has acquaintances who save up every penny during a whole year, denying themselves many things. What for? In order to go somewhere in a trendy country, where their friends and acquaintances go, to take a photo on the beach, well, near some sites, in order to later on post their photos somewhere on Instagram or somewhere else, showing what an awesome vacation they're having, just like everyone else. Well, isn't that a game? It's a game. Everything is a game. Right. Just what was also interesting is that we've suddenly started this topic and looked through the information on how gaming addiction actually works. The same as in this life. What mechanics various programmers use. Well, everything is fractally repeated. Just like in a computer game, let's say, a person gets addicted, he has some avatar, he lives his avatar's life, he worries, gets nervous, tries to pass something. But every step is programmed. The same is in this life. When a person leaves, excuse me, when evil spirits in his head leave instead of him, every step is programmed. After all, they know in advance where he will stumble long before the person himself knows it. He hasn't left his home yet, but his entire route is written. So, Igor Mikhailovich, in the previous program you've also mentioned precisely the fact that our life is similar to this, while our existence, let's say, in the three-dimensionality, is similar to a computer game, and that when a person approaches a dead end in some game, then, well, there is actually a wall there, whereas in the person's life the system turns him around. How does that work? But there is consciousness here, right? Meaning, the database of consciousness is a bit broader than the capabilities of a computer. Therefore, we notice that in a computer game we have reached the edge, where it's not programmed, and our avatar just cannot go there. So, he gets stuck too, goes around in circles, and we have to turn around, or they write to us, return to the game, that we have reached a wrong place. Whereas in life everything is just erased. In life we have a desire to take a step the other way, or circumstances arise, forcing us to turn back. That's why we don't see where our game in life is over where there are lines which were drawn for us. For instance, in the previous program, you and I have mentioned that along the path which a person should follow, if he is evolving spiritually, right? There are two limits, red lines, beyond which consciousness must not go, meaning that which is permitted and restricted by those boundaries. Well, in the same way, the system writes his virtuality for a person. 
when he wants to exit exactly to the spiritual, right? Well, if in spiritual, yes, a person can. He just becomes invisible for the system, uncontrollable. But if he wants to take a broader step beyond the possibilities that the system has allocated to him here, then problems start arising. He has to do his best to have these boundaries expanded for him. Why? Once again, we are touching upon what we talked about in the previous programs – hierarchies. And hierarchies yes. are very rigid there. Well, basically, we can already say it – the same as in this life. In a computer game, it's also so surprising. The fact that there is such a notion as God level, it is used everywhere nowadays, particularly in computer games, reaching the top level. And, unfortunately, the system trolls this notion in people's heads. It uses the God level to say that you are, I don't know, the best at parking, the best at photoshopping, it's God level. At Chimnas, did a split God level. What don't people actually see in all this? They don't see God. Once again, simony is taking place and assimilation to the external. That if a person is better at something than anyone else, it means he does it like God. Well, God doesn't do it. God doesn't do splits and, pardon me, doesn't park cars. That is, this striving for perfection does exist in a person and the system sort of shows… Originally, a person precisely as personality does have an aspiration for perfection, for spiritual perfection, for true freedom. Well, actually, for life. While consciousness substitutes everything, people might say, again consciousness, again about the same thing. Well, of course, guys, again about the same thing, again about the same thing, about the same traps we keep falling into, don't we? Because there is a lack of practice. Yet, practice will never be, let's say, acquired until a person starts working. If we look at theory and practice, these are two different things, particularly when it concerns the spiritual path. Well, imagine to live a life in theory. Well, our ordinary, three-dimensional one. Yes, we will know the theory, we will have read a lot of books. But when we start living, we will come across completely different things. Not what is described in novels, right? Relationships between people, a beautiful love and the rest. In life, everything is harsher, even in this life. And when a person takes the spiritual path, all the theory simply falls apart because he encounters, he is ready psychologically. Again, we bump into what? Into psychology. A person is ready for his consciousness to resist. Even our friends understand and know. Some have already observed this, some have tried, so to say. But they encounter what? Substitutions which they cannot sort out. And why? A simple question. After all, everything is simple. It means that the system turns a person around, that is, it twists him. Well, naturally, of course, it turns him around. If a person tries to keep steadily inside himself, doesn't listen to his consciousness, he tells it, no, you don't dictate to me. I am, and, as they say, does a spiritual practice with his mind, right? Well, at least like that, he's trying. Then life circumstances around him, his relatives, friends, acquaintances, work, studies, whatever, get arranged in such a way that the system exactly starts shifting him from this path. Why? It means there is weakness in the person if it shifts him, right? It means he isn't sure, he listens to his consciousness. While human consciousness is precisely that very demon, which, let's say, leads people astray from the straight path, in a literal sense of the word. It was also interesting, in the previous program you touched upon this topic of doubts as well, that how they actually ruin and adversely affect everything. They ruin and destabilize. Well, naturally. Yes. The main Godfighter is our consciousness. After all, a person cannot believe in God with his consciousness. And one should be aware of this. And as they say, but how come I do believe, and so on. Consciousness, a demon, will never serve God. Under constraint, yes. But when we force it to, it has no other option. Pardon me, bears ride bicycles in a circus for sugar too. They say that animals even walk on a wire. Why? They want to eat. The same is with consciousness. Since it wants to eat, it has no other option. That's when it starts working. But this is strict control. This is when we set red lines for it and hold it within these lines. Well, then it starts working. And the achievement of such a person is exactly when he, as personality, forces even Satan to serve God. In that case, 
this is right. Well, otherwise it won't work. But consciousness always doubts. It will keep persuading him to the last. It will be looking for arguments in the logic of its mind, asserting that there is no God, life is one. Well, it is surely one. In a computer game, as you mentioned, yes. there are many lives and many levels. Whereas here, there is only one life, one attempt. If you go in a wrong direction, you'll get lost. And people listen to their consciousness. They say, but how is that? I'll waste my life, I'll waste years. On what? On going somewhere, let's say, lighting candles, doing prayers, performing namaz, listening to what I'm told, right? I'll waste so much time. Well, of course you will. You can spend this time playing computer games, watching TV series, well, going to a pub with your friends, resting, living a normal person's life, yes? After all, that's what consciousness is telling. The key point, yes. You have also correctly mentioned such a point now, that the system says you've got many lives, meaning, like in a computer game, that… And, you know, it sort of mitigates this fear of death, doesn't it? Not many lives, but many roads. Many options, yes, this to start from the beginning. Options are many, but life is one. After all, it's not given here, it's there, let's say, in computer games. There, pardon me, if your avatar has died, a new life is given back to him, and you sort of continue from scratch. You already know the moves, know where and what is waiting for you. In this life everything is different. Here you've made a decision and must go, or not go, and not pull the wool over anyone's eyes, right? But if you serve Satan, serve Satan. After all, a person is free to make his choice. Well, he just should know and understand that he exists, I mean Lucifer. However, when a person understands that Lucifer exists, he understands that there is God as well. When a person realizes that there is death, he understands that there is also life. And this, this choice should be made when he knows everything. Well, the modern world has done it, so that people have forgotten about that. Have got lost in this game, yes. Have got lost in the game. It's well programmed. After all, it's interesting that these psychotechnics, which are in games, have an impact on a person as well, that the system always wants to complicate these rules of the game. It wants a person to move on to sort of a new level. And this complication, well, as they write that, naturally, the more time and attention a person invests into these complicated… Into the illusion. Yes, the more valuable it becomes for him. Well, naturally, of course. After all, he attains some level there, he gains some significance there. And what do demons on Earth fight for? For power, for status, for their hierarchy. Well, let's say, the higher a demon is, the deeper the grave. Well, or the more torturous it is afterwards. Let's say afterwards they don't spare, as they say in the Christian Church language. Afterwards they don't spare firewood to put under the boiler of a high authority demon. Yes. Well, yes, such a… so that it would feel hotter and comfortable. Yes. That is, it turns out that a person himself sort of forms the values in this world with his attention and time. Well, sure, definitely. That is, the more I have invested there, that's what you've got. The more, the more it is valuable for me. I'll put it simply. Where you have invested is what you've got. After all, a person acquires in a literal sense of the word. If we look at it from the standpoint of economics, our consciousness is like one tool, personality is like another tool, and attention is like a resource. So where we invest is what tool we acquire, right? Well, or it's some material thing, if we draw such a parallel. We either choose life, choose personality, invest our attention in its development, or in feeding a demon. Well, there is a trap here too. Let's say if we deal with a demon, we try to form it so that it would have more authority, but a lot of illusions immediately arise. Well, like in those very games. It seems to us that the demon is growing, but we have no influence on others. We remain at our level just as we have been. However, we start envying others very much, the ones who are growing. And what is envy? A simple question, friends. What is envy? Say quickly, without thinking. Envy. What is it? What will your demon answer? What is it? Desire, right? Well, desire, yes. But what is it in actual fact? What is envy from the standpoint of a demon towards personality? A means of softening off, naturally. No, it's stimulation. Stimulation, yes. The most banal stimulation for an action. Once again, for what? Great. For investing one's attention. 
no more than that. Exactly. After all, they actually program it in these computer games so that a person would constantly see… They keep stimulating. Yes. Would see those who achieve. Yes. Would see new opportunities and the like. And why in life, in our ordinary three-dimensional life, is a person always waiting? Who of you have truly achieved happiness, guys? No one. And you won't be able to achieve it in this world. Why? Because it doesn't exist here. We have such a goal. We'll get there and build a house. Banally, we have talked about it a thousand times. Yet, we'll build a house, everything that has been programmed. A nice car, nice children, a nice position. And what follows after that? And here. Simply. And here, simply like in games, a parallel is drawn as well, because the system… Well, in games, I beg your pardon. Yes. There is no aging and no diseases and no disrespect by relatives. No frightening in a loneliness when among relatives and friends. No understanding that death is approaching, while there is no way out. After all, there are no such things in games. The system just keeps setting new goals. There is always an exit in games. Yes. Surely. And then what do games end with? The same, yes. With triumph. You are becoming someone. Yes. You are given applause. You've become a hero. There are a lot of heroes in life too. People become heroes, they want to become heroes. But what happens afterwards, after the applause? Well, for example, a person has been doing sports all his life. Well, I'm a former athlete too. I know what it is, but I've never strived for these Olympic pedestals. I had other things to do, and I knew perfectly well what it is. But I have many friends who got on this pedestal, and life ends after that. Well, it seems to be continuing. Psychologically, yes, and very early at that, a person realizes… A tremendous psychological trauma. For as long as he is among the stars, he is sated by this. In this triumph, yes. And then he understands. He has no health. Well, it's good. It's a luck if a person is competent and smart. Let's say, if he has managed to fulfill himself in life somehow. But as a rule, there is resentment, bitterness and a feeling that no one needs him. And consciousness has no time. And here also, with time, it misbehaves very much. A person remembers himself, how he strived, what he did for the country. And what does it mean to win the Olympic Games, right? After all, you did it for people, for the whole country. The flag was raised in your honor. They applauded you for a while and forgot you. The country remains, people remain. But that honor is gone, and no one applauds you like that anymore, no one needs you anymore, you are already the past. And this is frightening and scary, you see? This is also an interesting… While a person gave up his life, yes. in the literal sense of the word, because it takes so much health that God forbid. Here you just said that he gave up his life. In fact, giving away one's time and attention, this is what… For triumph. Constantly going from soul to personality. And we will put it simply. How many people have lost their health along the way, never reaching this pedestal? And the national anthem wasn't played, and the flag wasn't raised in his honor. He just got lost along the way, burned out. There are a lot of such people as well. But he actually strove for what? To become the best. Again, to become whom? The best of the best. This is stimulation, just like in a computer game. To work a lot, to work hard. And again, here is the paradox. After all, the greatest reward that a person can receive in this lifetime is life, is freedom. However, a person puts in a lot of effort, a lot of work, suffers pain, misery and so on, in order to climb the pedestal, right? So that the same people as him would applaud him. Whereas a person is too lazy when it comes to becoming free, to gaining life. Yes. Why? Yes, yes, and in fact… After all, it's even hard for him to work on his own consciousness, to do trite observation in order to drive it into a corner, consciousness, while in reality it's very easy to do. After all, pardon me, demons always talk. They themselves always give hints and everything. Well, but when a person gains a little bit of inner freedom, he sees manifestations of the invisible world in this visible one with full evidence, absolute evidence of how a demon manipulates people. He hears these desires and stimulations in his head, like commands, in an imperative tone. Well, sorry, well, when a person is free, 
He understands that. He does what he needs to do in order to get what he wants. But when a person hasn't done the initial work on himself or has worked for two minutes and already believes that he has comprehended everything, he already knows everything, while he actually remains the system's slave, just as he has been. But the desire is still there. It's the same as if a person would go to a gym, let's say, put on sportswear, well, do a couple of exercises and live full of pride that he is already an Olympic champion. After all, he was in the gym, he was doing some exercises and he has something to do with the sport. And he is ready to participate in the Olympic Games already tomorrow and beat everyone. Here there is also… The same often happens in life. Well, this is consciousness. These are games again. Yes. Again, these are false directives and again stimulation of what? Desires, selfishness, pridefulness, and so on. Well, this is actually so. Yes, and rising up to this triumph, in fact, indeed, every person wants precisely freedom, and the system draws that, for sure, on this top bar, on this… Who will get freedom? Freedom, but dependency on the applause of other people. Well, let's put it simply, yes. People progress in their career, and it seems to them that their boss has much more freedom. And if he takes this position, then he will become as free as the boss is. But again, he has freedom only over the little demons like you, at this level. However, the man has spent a lot of time and effort, has taken this position and realizes that there are much bigger and much more serious demons above him now, which he hadn't seen before, because this little bit more senior demon was covering him from them. The game gets more complicated. And the game gets more complicated. Another level. Well, it really happens so in life. Yes. To reach the level of God, sort of a like script of the system. Well, you know how even a minor demon always tries to become God. Why? Because that implies unlimited capabilities. But again, Igor Mikhailovich, last time you exactly mentioned that all these scripts, these algorithms of the system can be totally destroyed by a free step of either a person himself… One step. Right. One step. But a real step. One. Which is taken not to the demon's dictation, but really a step of personality towards itself. Well, for this, one needs… Meaning a person… To make an effort. Right. That is, should a person just take this step every time, in every situation, or is it some kind of inner choice that was made just once? One just shouldn't be a traitor. Do you know what the worst thing is? It's when a person betrays himself. Yes, you can betray someone's interests or something else, but you are, let's say, a traitor in their eyes. However, you are still a hero for yourself. But when you betray yourself, that's the nastiest thing. Well, it seems to me nothing can be worse. And if you have taken a step towards God, don't turn your back on Him. This cannot be forgiven. It doesn't mean that God won't forgive. God loves everyone who will come to Him. You just won't be able to come. If you have already begun serving, excuse me, not God but Satan, it will be extremely hard to break free. You make your task more difficult, just like in a computer game, you skip several levels when you cannot pass your minor level, yet you are already jumping to higher planes. Yes, indeed, in everyday life people share their experience how complicated these dependencies become, let's say, in relationships among people in families. And who complicates them? Right. Let's take any family. After all, it's nothing but a game, the same computer game. A husband plays his wife, the wife plays her husband. Excuse me, but where is love? Where is mutual understanding? And what is love? Well, let's say, earthly love. First of all, it's mutual understanding and mutual respect. Isn't that so? It is. It's not that infinite lust for each other, excuse me, like two doggies when they lust it after each other and then bite each other like dogs do. No, this is not life. This is not love. Love is mutual understanding, mutual respect and mutual help. It's when a husband is not ashamed to wash the dishes and a wife is not ashamed to change a light bulb, let's say, without any offense and any pushing. This is mine, that is yours. When this is mine, that is yours thing happens, well, this is… this is already not ours, isn't that so? Sure, everyone should do their own thing, it's clear. But there must be mutual help and mutual understanding first and foremost. Igor Mikhailovich, here is a practical question from married couples, from people 
Why can't this be stopped on the first try? You have decided not to continue, and you fail to stop this situation or thoughts in your head on the first try. Let's say an athlete has decided to win. How much time and training is needed in order to win? But if he's stable in his desires, if he really strives and invests in this and develops his body, he gets this chance. And what happens in this case? A person has felt there is a wave of, well, let's say, more or less freedom of the personality. He has felt that he really can, let's say, gain freedom. He has, well, if not love, but respect for God. He feels that God exists, let's call it this way, so to say. The person has felt that there is God and an inner inclination. He makes a decision, I must get there, whatever it takes. He has made a decision and sat down. Okay, consciousness says, so what? It didn't work, right? So, what are you going to do? Well, you've made a decision, what's next? And the person feels lost. And consciousness immediately tells him, right? Again, who tells? Consciousness. Why? Because he delegates to consciousness what he should be doing himself. That is, he delegates his work as personality to the demon to perform. Will the demon do that? And then he wonders why his consciousness is so opposed to everything. Why does his consciousness hate God? Why does it force him out of his religion? After all, we know a lot of cases when parents are really in religion, they truly treat it with respect. With all their hearts they perform prayers, all the rituals and everything. They accustom children to religion. Yet the children grow up a little and become God-fighters. Why? A simple question. They haven't felt it themselves. They were going through consciousness, right? Well, of course. When a child sees that when he comes, say, to a church, he must stand there and pray. Meanwhile, his friends are playing football on his only day off. Well, he starts feeling resentful, doesn't he? When they poke their fingers at him and say that he is a sectarian, he feels offended. Who is offended? The imp is offended. While his parents are pious, they accustom him to church. But they themselves lack understanding and don't teach the child, don't teach him inner spiritual freedom. If a person gains this freedom, he he doesn't care about football that his friends are playing. Yes, he can feel sorry for them, because they're spending time on their own thing. This doesn't mean that, let's say, if he has embarked on the spiritual path, if he attends church, he cannot play football. He can. Why not? At a time free from prayers, right? Igor Mikhailovich, you just said that a person perhaps doesn't succeed because he delegates this matter Certainly. to his consciousness. He measures with consciousness. How can an ordinary person understand? After all, a human is accustomed to perform everything primarily with consciousness, and he doesn't distinguish. And here the biggest nuances are concealed, right? There is theory and there is practice. A demon possesses a great reserve of theory, but it doesn't have a single step of practice in God's direction. And it can always stifle this inner need with commas, examples, and everything else. It actually has plenty of tools to extinguish the inner flame which begins to ignite. You see, to extinguish this fire and all these aspirations. However, can you really entrust, well, let's say, an elephant with guarding a china shop inside? Well, it will break everything because it's an elephant. And here it means entrusting your spiritual growth to Satan. And what is the task, well, of a human as personality? Meaning, if not by assigning to consciousness, then how should he develop? Through feelings. Through feelings. Solely through feelings, by means of restrictions, by watching and developing the observer position. Well, let's say, as I already mentioned, the main traitor to that very Lucifer is primary consciousness. It's the junior tier, which, as a rule, they don't reckon with. But it's a key one. If you feed it well all the time, it can be enticed. And he, the observer position, those who are well, so to say, familiar with the Alatra sign or something else, they know this. Or Oriental practices. It's available in Christianity. But unfortunately, it's too camouflaged. In Islam, this primary perception, 
well, that which we call primary consciousness is also camouflaged. It is sort of possible to find. Well, one day we will probably make a program, if our friends are interested, who will discuss religions as regards what they mention and where. About those very subpersonalities, this is present in any religion, about primary and secondary consciousness, about those very demons. Well, although, let's say those who want to, can find this. There are life stories of the saints, right. yes, those who were really accumulating God's love, who were really following the path. Well, there aren't that many of them, unfortunately, but they differ from those windbags in whom imps put on garments and pretend to be God's servants. There were very few true saints. Well, that can be seen by who they were, by their work. Generally speaking, thanks to the knowledge, when you read these works, you already understand where these grains are, where he lies, where a person lies and where he doesn't, where a demon lies, yes, and where indeed a person, while gaining freedom, right, shared experience with his brothers, because he was telling primarily about labor, about work, about the fact that gaining of the Holy Spirit is a hard work in the first place, and it's a practice through feelings and not a mental process. However, this has always been perceived negatively by the rest. How come? We must perceive with our mind. What can we perceive with the mind? The periodic table? We can, as we said in the previous program, unlike, pardon me, the prophets who couldn't know it. This we can do. But not more. However, that which concerns the spiritual, guys, with our mind we can perceive only literature, exalted into holiness, come and wait until, pardon me, some freebie falls on us, because we have exalted this into holiness. Again, to wait for what? For material remuneration. Where? Here, in three-dimensionality. And to hope that we will be rewarded later on as well. For what? For exalting Satan? Well, isn't that so? It is. And when people embarked on the spiritual path, they worked. They understood that this is related to feelings. Well, they called it utterance through the heart. After all, many of them said precisely that even Jesus' prayer had to be done not with words. Right. If it is done with words, well, at initial stages it is done with words anyway, but subsequently under no circumstances. These are feelings. It's what must live in one's heart. It's what comes from the depth, even from under the heart. Meaning exactly, well, basically it's that very lotus. It's just that it is translated into performing a mantra, right? Yet, mantra again. In mantra, what is being done? It's a verbal utterance, multiple times. Such an auto-hypnosis, nothing more. And what will you get from auto-hypnosis? Pictures that you will covet in your head. You'll get images, but not reality. That which this should also be known. Right, the system lures a person precisely with this, with these images. Well, yes. it's bad when people don't understand and don't know what perception through feelings is. They should work on this too. After all, we have already talked about this, and we have often encountered people. In their revelations, some of them start telling that they don't know what love is. They cannot perceive this through feelings, but they want to. Since they want, it means they will succeed. They should work. It's just that, indeed, it turns out that this entire experience which people gain, like in a game, 99% of it is needed for this game only. And here, in three-dimensionality, it is basically the same. Everything that a person acquires in three-dimensionality is needed only here. However, here as personality doesn't acquire the main thing. Life. His own experience of life, experience through feelings. Because everything is pointless. But if a person would ask himself a simple question, what is the goal of your life? Just like this, right? The goal. That goal on which you are ready to spend your life, on which you are ready to spend every second and every instant of your attention. A simple question. Just honestly answer it, friends, with your hand upon your heart. Certainly, consciousness will lie, gaining life, and so on. But you should respond honestly. If you listen to consciousness or try to find the answer with it, you will find many, many things, starting from wealth up to significance, to power, to health, to whatever you like, but not God's love. Yet, what can be more important? Let's put it this way. Yes, life, eternity, it's wonderful, but it is wonderful, but the first thing a person must do is to gain God's love while prior to that he himself must come to love God. However, he should understand that there is God, and if you don't know and don't comprehend him, well, 
your consciousness will spit on images of saints. How can it be otherwise? And you will be doing this. After all, it's not the demon who is spitting inside you, it's you who are spitting. The demon has neither hands, nor saliva, nor mouth. Right. You have also said that a person must gain it himself. And here, also recalling the experience of the Holy Fathers, in particular of Theophan the Recluse, who was following… Well, you have given a good example. Yes. That very Theophan the Recluse, right? After all, he expressly describes… Yes. …what, pardon me, our friends from Alatra are going through, doesn't he? Yes. He tells about those very demons in the head, which one has to fight against, and about the same stages which he faced. Well, he has sort of his own language. We should make allowance, for it was the 19th century. And the person was in religion, and he used those tools. But this indicates again that in Christianity there are grains, thanks to which such people as Thief and the Recluse gained life eternal, and they are no longer in this world. And this means a lot. They are in that world. It's just that I've also memorized very well that exactly among the tools of getting away from the system it was talked about the internal, about this spiritual zeal, as they called it, about the fact that it is actually fiery. Well, spiritual zeal, again, what they called fiery, spiritual zeal, this means that there is a set goal and an absolute aspiration for it. Just like we said in the beginning of our conversation, an Olympic champion, if you are really an athlete, if you really want to become an Olympic champion, you have to work very hard. This is the goal of your life, all the rest is secondary. That's when you'll be able to become a champion. The same is in this case. Right. If your goal is life, if it's God's love, not life, but rather God's love, everything starts here. If you aspire to become an angel, you won't become one. Here is a simple example. It's impossible to become an angel only by desiring to become an angel. Whereas, if you aspire, and if you yourself love God, feel Him and strive for His love, then the gate will open, and then transformation from the dead into the alive is inevitable. And how can it be otherwise? Great! It's just that this very zeal was precisely called active zeal. Surely. And it is very… well, sort of participation of a person himself was essential. Yet, without an action, without this, nothing will work out. Application of His will. For sure. Once I said that, in extremely rare cases, for really great service to those who came or to God's world, a person would obtain it. Well, here is a good example, let's say, of Jesus Christ, when He simply by His will, when the man repented and took a step, when He opened up before Jesus Christ while being next to Him on the cross, well, Jesus took Him alone. They do have a right to do that. However, excuse me, these are very few people in a thousand years. Well, and the rest have to work hard. Right. Let's put it this way. It's like they can present you with an Olympic medal, but you won't step on the podium in front of everyone. Well, here he was sort of presented with an Olympic medal. It's clear that everything is fine with this man. He became an angel, he's next to Jesus. Well, that's his mercy. And what about the rest? The rest have to see the goal zealously and ignore obstacles, right? It is valuable precisely when you yourself overcome this. Of course it's valuable, that's the point. Simon the path. Well, and again, certainly, you are the one who goes through it, who gains. And what is this life given for? Here is another simple question. Excuse me, I've addressed you regarding the goal, and I'll address you again. What is this life given for, in your opinion? In order for you, pardon me, to turn from nothing into nothing? In order for you to sow evil, to prove something to someone that you are worth something. Guys, well, no matter how hard you try to prove, well, there were very strong demons in history, like those whom we have already mentioned, Napoleons and Hitlers and Alexanders of Macedonia. Well, and where are they now? Merely in some of you. And they haven't gone further. And what's the point? The point is simple. What are you here for? And these are the most important questions in life. Who are you? What are you here for? And what is your goal? And without them, this whole world, it's an illusion, it's a computer game. Right. Constant distractions, one thing then another, right? 
Well, this is so. And what's the point of this life then, of this slavish existence, when demons live for you? When you're like a tool, you don't want, but you're forced to. After all, sometimes consciousness forces people to do what they don't want to. They resist because they still have at least some remains of conscience, right? Even this little, yet unhatched cheek, that little angel does resist, while people are forced to act because demons compel them. Well, who does all the evil in this world, if not demons, if not us? No one. After all, evil doesn't exist by itself. It just doesn't. It's a product of our life activity. You have said correctly that every person nevertheless feels that he's a loser in this game, and hence here are both these states of discomfort and… Of course he is a loser. Yet, is a winner in a computer game really a winner? He is a loser. He has wasted time. He has wasted life on, pardon me, winning an illusion. The same is in this world. No matter what a person acquires, he wins an illusion. Well, he was happy for a while. Even an Olympic champion. On the one hand, yes, it's a great merit. A person has achieved something, but it's an illusion for him. That's the trouble. And as years go by, he understands that if he were given an opportunity to live his life in a different way, well, for the sake of that minute of glory, it lasts a minute. Well, maybe if he is stupid, he would do it again. However, those who have grasped the essence would never do that. Yes, after all, the most dangerous thing which consciousness does, which the system does… Substitution. Substitutions. A person totally forgets where real life is, he doesn't distinguish himself from these masks that he plays. And everything is erased. The trouble is that this distinction is erased. And again, consciousness is what gives us all the information. Everything that we see, listen and perceive. Well, if a person doesn't doesn't perceive their feelings, he is like a blind kitten. He perceives everything that is being told to him. Yet, who is telling? Demons. And they actually substitute everything. Words are being substituted in consciousness, and the essence is substituted. Well, this is a continuous manipulation. And, by the way, here, well, I believe it will be interesting as regards the system itself. Concerning substitutions and these so to say, how it patches its holes, while it has plenty of them, just like in any computer game. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll begin with simple things, okay? Now, this information is not actively brought up, but specialists talk about this a little. I mean physicians. Well, I relate more to medicine now than to sports. Roughly, let's say, in the last decade, several decades, a surge of mental disorders began in big cities. Well, it was also noted and noticed by psychologists and psychiatrists and the like. However, since June 2015, everything changed drastically. The situation started worsening disastrously in terms of mental health of the population of our planet. And it's already noted, pardon me, even among relatively healthy people, as psychiatrists say, in their understanding, there are no healthy people, only undiagnosed ones. Yet, people started noticing strange manifestations in themselves, ones that they hadn't had before. A simple example. A person got up in the morning, went to brush his teeth and cannot recall his name. And there are many cases like that, meaning he has to make effort, it lasts for an instant, but it does take place. And so, talking to people, you encounter the following manifestations. A normal, healthy person, yes, but people see these gaps in consciousness when it has to cover up. But again, consciousness easily smooths all that out and immediately forces a person to forget about it. And there are many phenomena like this. Problems arise not just with psyche, but, excuse me, with health as a whole too. A lot of strange diseases have appeared. But again, our merry psychiatry reduces it all to psychosomatic diseases, which prevail, well, basically in 70% of cases among hospital patients today. Sort of made-up diseases, supposedly caused by mental disorders. Well, and… And what are such failures in operation connected with? The failures are connected not only, pardon me, with people's health, 
but with climate as well. When did this acute exacerbation begin? In June 2015. And everything started changing drastically. And let's consider another interesting example in the field of geopolitics, ok? After all, those technologies which they had been using before the year 2015, they had worked for decades. While these are, well, technologies for turning the population into zombies, for controlling people, all of them had been sort of clear and understandable. After all, they started breaking down all over the world. People feel that lies actually taking place. And people feel that substitutions have appeared. They don't work. They just don't work. Yes. And so people start sort of waking up and, pardon me, Authoritative political strategists just break their teeth on simple things. Right. And, well, psychologists try to explain this somehow, and political technologists also try to explain it all. Well, guys, the world is changing. The system is failing. We have said that the system has started economizing. Yes, and it is economizing on kids and on that. It's really economizing. However, the trouble is that I would again give this example, since we have started talking about computer games. Imagine, such a worm, well, so to say, a virus, has appeared in a computer game, which causes everything to glitch at times. And so you are playing, you seem to be playing, and suddenly either it has frozen or something unplanned has happened. Well, the system is self-regulating, it immediately sort of hides everything, and the game seems to continue, sometimes less and sometimes more, but the longer you play, the more often this happens. Well, again, if a program is quite advanced, it smooths all that out, doesn't it? No. The system is trying to smooth out. However, if a person is attentive, he sees this. He sees it in everything, in himself, in others, and so on. It's also interesting that people have started telling the truth more, meaning demons have started talking. They tell straight out. You just need to learn to listen. So they don't always lie, they tell the truth straight out, don't they? Yes, what they want. About themselves, yes. Who else can they tell the truth about? Right? Surely, about their desires and aspirations. And here is a simple example. Two men meet, well, they are partners, small business nonetheless, and one of them asks the other, how are you doing? And in the course of the conversation he says, I want to take your business away, and he continues the conversation on a totally different topic. But the other man, pardon me, is one of our guys, who is accustomed to controlling his consciousness, and that doesn't escape him. So he asks him, and why do you want to take my business away? The other man says, what do you mean, I don't want that? Our guy says, well, you've just said so. That one says, I didn't say that. This is a true story, literally several days ago. If there had been no witnesses nearby, then no one would have proved anything to anyone. It would have passed unnoticed. Yes, but since there were several other people with this man, so to say, in communication, it wasn't two people who participated in the conversation, there were other witnesses who confirmed that, and the one who had said that was extremely surprised, he sort of couldn't have said it. Well, some psychologists will say it's a Freudian sleep or something else. No, guys, it's not Freud anymore, Freud has nothing to do with this. Meaning, the system speaks of its plans openly. Many things start slipping out. Or how it is, right? Absolutely right. It announces its actions. Well, and again, even among our participants, those who really work on themselves, they see and often encounter a lot of such things. Well, many now face not just the fact that the system is talking, but also its influence on the state of people's health. Well, psychologists and physicians ascribe this to climate, environmental conditions, GMO food, well, pardon me, when today you are sick, you can be… have to be taken to the emergency room, while tomorrow you are absolutely healthy. Well, yes, it might be said that these are psychosomatic manifestations. That is, it's the work of the septum field, and this is the way it… Well, if we speak the language of physics, let's say, of the physics that was told about in the Alatra physics report, then yes, glitches are already happening at the level of the septum field. Well, those who understand what it is, have a reason to think. It is such an alarming signal, yes. No, it's not an alarming signal. It's the time of the crossroads. It's normal. It's precisely the work and interference of those against whom the consciousness of some people has turned so much. This is normal. It's a little chance for those who aspire to gain life. At least some freedom. Because the system gets distracted and spends a lot of effort on patching its holes. Well, it already hardly controls failures that are increasing in it. Meaning, at this time, it's easier for personality to come into contact with the spiritual world. Right. 
and what are, pardon me, these mass mental disorders which are increasing? We have already talked about this. Well, it's egoism, obsession, and so on. That is, the system simply fixates people on themselves. However, people themselves are to blame, first and foremost. They serve their demon. They serve Lucifer instead of serving God. And naturally, by saving on simple things. And what does the system do when it gets exposed to a severe attack? It becomes much more aggressive. So it's natural that it just fixates many people, while drives them to such insanity. Pardon me, what is insanity? It's the same as when a person has fallen through the ice, right? Such a situation. Let's draw a parallel. While what is the rescue of a drowning man? The drowning man's own job. It's the drowning man's own job. Absolutely right. If he doesn't serve the system, he won't have any depression and he won't have any problems. The system has no power over him. And if it doesn't have power, hence, it cannot drive him where? Into these states in which there seems to be no way out. Also, by the way, one of the methods of designing games is to drive a player into the hardest dead-end conditions, to drive him into… Well, certainly, the emotionally difficult ones, and again… Artificially, so that he wouldn't be able to get out. Well, it's creation of a situation. Yet, does the system act differently in our life? Doesn't it drive people into psychological dead-ends? And doesn't it create tension with other people and so on? It does so create… So that he would pay, yes. Yet, why? Because a person doesn't know what love is. Hatred, envy and stupidity live in him. Well, isn't it so? And if a person really wanted to live and accumulated God's love, if he lived by the Holy Spirit, he would have neither anger nor envy. Nothing. He doesn't need that. It's an excess load, which people carry in their bosom. It's the same as to make a hedgehog of cast iron and to carry it in one's bosom. It pricks and it's heavy. There is also such an interesting technique that, when these games are designed, they are built so that a person would think that when he lives for work or something else, life in the game supposedly passes without him, that your participation is very important. Well, I don't know. Of course, the importance. Without you, the harvest will be lost or something else, that is… Well, this is natural. People again get drawn into… An illusion of life. An illusion of life is created. Substitution is created. The importance of this person is created. And he worries about that harvest, which doesn't exist. But at this time, he forgets about that harvest, which he hasn't even sowed yet, his spiritual one. Isn't that so? Again, who creates these games? Well, everyone will say, there are smart people, competent people. Yet, who is smart in these people? And what kind of a desire, pardon me, are they guided by, right? And whom does this desire come from? And, generally speaking, from where do thoughts come to them? And why are they so smart? And why are games getting much more sophisticated so fast? Mm -hmm. And why do they duplicate our life? Demons. Both in this life and in that one. This is all the handiwork of demons. Isn't it so? Putting a hundred percent of one's life into the system's hands, and it totally… Absolutely right. And just leave as you want. Igor Mikhailovich, once we talked about the Ninth Day, are these computer games and the Ninth Day, the system's theory of the Ninth Day, interconnected in any way? No. No, they are not interconnected in any way. Here it's just distraction of attention, and the person is wasting his life. He lives in an illusion, in cultivation of egoism, pridefulness and all the rest in him. He simply increases stupidity. Thus, the person, well, sort of gets enslaved. He has put shackles on himself and he is suffering. Whereas the ninth day is a dream, a dream of the system to create such an embodiment. A sovereign. Yes, a sovereign equal to God. It's just that it's also interesting that the system precisely cultivates this, so to say, people with contrived megalomania who believe that they are gods, these games which playing at being God. You are now saying playing at being God. Yet, let's take an ordinary family. Don't parents actually play God over their children? When they want to live life instead of them? When they tell them how to make this step or that step? Yes, there should be parental care. But children are not slaves, they are humans. However, parents forget about this, don't they? 
They do, and in addition, they don't know which God isn't, well, sort of, yes, meaning true God is like love, right? That is, does he really perform such functions? Absolutely right. Does he really use such methods, right? If God were a dictator, if he wanted us to be slaves, well, then how would he differ from Satan? A simple question. It's just that it is interesting that every person has this need to build sort of a creative society, because very often this this stimulus, this will not… Yet, where does this need originate from? Where does the need for a creative society, an equal society, come from? Well, many people say a utopian society, right? From where do people have this need for equality, love and respect for each other? Doesn't it come from the inside? It is from the inside. Well, consciousness immediately begins to say that it's impossible. Why? Well, due to economic and other problems. Meaning, it's unrealistic, it's impossible, it will be destructive. Everything is possible. After all, conditions and rules of the game here are again dictated and created by people themselves, by their choice. And whom they listen to is already another question. Well, the freedom of choice. If they want, they listen to the demon. But it's people who build this world with their attention, with their hands, with their deeds. After all, this is true. Just as in a family. Who creates a family? Demons or angels? People by their choice, depending on whom they listen to, is what kind of a family and what kind of life they have. I've also got interested in the fact that when a scenario is being written in games as to building of a society, this society is actually, just like you've said, being built on solely economic relations that people in games are not pious, meaning they are not spiritual. And is our world really spiritual? Pardon me, are people in the modern society actually spiritual? A simple question. Yes, we have many religions, we have many believers. But we are talking about believers, we aren't talking about their spirituality. And is their spiritual upbringing actually being taken care of? Intellectual upbringing, yes. Consciousness is being developed in terms of Holy Scriptures, something else. Excuse me, compliance with some moral principles is wonderful, is splendid. But people are at least ashamed. I belong to one or another religion, I mustn't do this. And people don't do it. Well, even the demon here sort of agrees to stop. Yet, is spirituality really developing in them? And it's not that easy to gain spirituality. No one will grant it to you. Because you lit a candle or perform namaz, you won't become more spiritual. And here, you have precisely given the example of Thief on the Recluse. Yes. This is exactly the path of gaining spirituality, where one must work, and work a lot. And is it actually easy to get rid of demons? No. The initial stages are extremely difficult. After all, a person must overcome a lack of faith in himself, conquer the God-fighter in himself. And it's not that easy. Because the God-fighter denies. He wants something different. He wants the earthly. He tells you that you're wasting and ruining your life. Well, the double standards again. Yes. We discussed them in detail in the previous program, right? For this, you know, like in order to start recovering from addiction, you need to admit that you have it inside, that this is, first and foremost, exactly what the Holy Fathers mentioned regarding the fact that… To stop lying to yourself. Right. And look into your own eyes, honestly. And again, first of all, to give the answer. Who are you? What is your goal? Right? Well, that's what everything begins with. The true goal. By the way, it was said that what is actually important is this need to move in the desire to go to God is what has unfortunately been lost over the centuries. It's exactly the availability of the knowledge and how to move, because indeed the system turns a person around. Well, we have talked about Theophan, right? Yes. I'll speak of him again. Wasn't he actually in those conditions? He was. Right. Yes, he was wandering. He could have been moving faster, but he still accomplished his spiritual feat, unlike millions of those who were nearby. And why? Well, I like it very much how he describes even these tools, thanks to… He was merely describing the tools. And what is the essence? He just wanted God's love. Was craving for it. He himself understood that there is God and that he should love God first and foremost. And so, he really came to love Him with all his heart while the rest is just the path. 
yes, they can be stumbling, the path may be long or short, it's the path. Clearly, when a person who has accepted God's love has tools, he can pass straight. Well, he can pass, pardon me, and zigzags too, but the main point for him is to reach the goal. You have said it right that, well, how the person felt. It is just interesting how the Holy Fathers described this experience of the true in a prayer, when they were coming in contact with God. Well, they just gave an example that one an engineer would test, let's say, his mechanism, and got into this field, that is, the field of air, which sort of pulled him in, lifted him, raised him slightly. And so they described that the true prayer, the real prayer, sort of pulls a person out of this three-dimensional world. Of course. That he gains this experience of living in the light. Sure, because they describe again. Well, that's how they describe spiritual practice. There is also everyday life, which they describe. That very Theophan, when he faces the resistance of the system, when he's fighting with these demons, when he's overcoming this lack of faith and everything else, and is striving for love, meaning it's the everyday routine. However, they also tell, again, these Holy Fathers, as you say, also describe spiritual practices. And the correct association here is being pulled out. And doesn't a person lose connection with this three-dimensionality? Doesn't he escape from under the power of the system itself in a spiritual practice which is performed in the right way? Yes, even if for a short while, but he does gain this freedom. That's the point of practices. And they describe that there is actually no desire to return of course there is no desire. into these childish games and addictions, yes. That's are... right, children's games and addictions. Children's games, that's exactly how they describe. But isn't it so? And let's look, let's again go back to our three-dimensionality. Well, let's take that very geopolitics, okay? Well, in order not to offend, not to disturb anyone, aren't these children's games of grown-up fellows who have got lost in playing to such an extent that they kill people? Well, these are children's games, aren't they? What are they fighting for? For an illusion, without valuing other people's lives? They rule through violence, like in games. Yes, but who is doing that in them? And what for? For the rest to be afraid. After all, again, stimulation of other people's consciousness is going on. What arises? A feeling of fear. Emotions. So, does it mean that there is no critical thinking? When there is domination of fear, when a person doesn't see tomorrow, when his entire current life comes down to paying off debts, actually, all this formation is created artificially. On the other hand, when he desires something that is actively promoted, when will he have time to engage in spirituality? That is, look, it's like a computer game, only in this reality. An absolute parallel, yes. Of course, such conditions are being created, that a person, pardon me, has to live by reasonableness. While reasonableness is what? It's domination of a demon over personality. When the demon says, just look how many problems you have, and you must resolve them all, and so on. Well, and he generates a commotion, and at the same time he doesn't resolve anything. A commotion? He just talks about it and generates a commotion, such a… he stirs up the swamp. Well, and the person is sitting in this stirred-up swamp like a little frog. It is also interesting, going back specifically to experience of the Holy Fathers as well, it's just that at that time, when they were studying this experience, they also clearly mentioned that there are certain tools of how not to become dependent on these demons. There are some tools for getting out of these situations. They described these stages which an ascetic was going through, that the very first stage was certainly that he had thoughts, thoughts aimed at goodness. However, all this thinking was in passions, there was no this sort of inner flame right away. And what is understood by the word in passions? In desires. A passion is a prevailing desire. To desire passionately, right? Yes. Meaning, it's what all citizens of this little planet encounter. Passionate desires for everything except life, except God's love. But at the same time, what does everyone want? Everyone wants peace, love and respect. They want this, but they desire something different. And if it were vice versa, the world would be different. Right. Everything is simple. Mm -hmm. What is further described is that there were sort of subsequent stages as well, when basically it became as if half and half of this spiritual feeling and these passionate thoughts… Initial, initial experiences, let's say, of balancing perception through feelings and temptations from the system. 
That's right, it's the allocation of the power of one's attention. Meaning, by intensively applying certain efforts from the perspective of personality, a person already begins to control his attention, and he doesn't support talks in his head, he doesn't support fears, he doesn't support these illusions which the system creates, but already discerns. Here it is reasonableness, what he needs and what he doesn't, you see? Here is a simple example. You are going shopping, you need to buy a pair of slippers. Well, who hasn't encountered this? You came for slippers. But meanwhile, you've tried all the fur coats on. Here, many have already begun laughing. But this is true. It's slippers you came for. You forgot what for. You don't have money for a fur coat. Why are you trying it on? Yes, by the way. By the way, yes. Well, it's an exaggeration. But if we draw a parallel, this is really so. But when you go to get slippers, you come in, take the slippers and go on to do what you need to do. That is, there aren't any problems, right? Mm -hmm. But do you need slippers? You do. You can't run around barefoot after all. That's it. These are those very temptations, those very distractions for everything. Those passions, right? Yes. Well, some would say, how to live then? Does it mean not to pay attention to anything at all? Of course not, guys. Pay attention and live normally. Everything is fine, everything works out. And you will try on fur coats, you cannot get away from that. But the main thing is for this not to be to Satan's dictation. Igor Mikhailovich, now we have again touched upon the topic of such attention. We received a letter on this topic from a participant. It's a woman, and she asks the following question. In the previous program you spoke about the distribution of attention, that 80% of attention must be paid to spiritual development and 20% to material living, and in the program Consciousness and Personality, the ratio of 70 to 30 percent was mentioned, while in primordial electrophysics the ratio of 90 to 10 percent was mentioned. And the question is, how… How to understand this, right? Why are the numbers so different? What is such a different ratio related to… It is all very simple. In the beginning of the path, when a person starts to feel and understand something, there must be at least… And so, in Consciousness and Personality, yes. we said that at least 70% must be paid to the spiritual and 30% to the world, because you will still be tempted with a fur coat and with something else. So, these fur coats instead of slippers, this is 30%. Next stage is already the stage of formation, when a person is maturing spiritually. The ratio must be at least 80% to 20%. You must pay 80% of your attention solely to God's love, to its attainment, and 20% to all the mundane. All the same. Strangers, those close to you won't notice the difference. Whereas, when a person already reaches, let's say, spiritual freedom, then it is 90% to 10% because he is still here, in this world, and consciousness must eat something too. If it doesn't eat, it will die. And if it dies, sorry, but you will break the law. You have no right to live here until the body has finished serving. You should work, you should benefit people. And one of the needs, which was attained by the Holy Fathers, was their deeds, right? Right, exactly, action. It is a spiritual need to help people, real help, namely, in a spiritual sense. So, 10% of attention is more than enough for everything, for work, for life, and for very active help to people. That's just it. You simply don't waste it on what is unnecessary. Right. After all, many Holy Fathers went into this inner activity, but they always came back to people. And here is a good example of them, by the way, how they use the power of their attention. Well, that's how it works. That is, yes, they were in a fight, in some tumble, but they spent about 30% on the worldly life, then 20%, then came down to 10%. However, their activity wasn't decreasing, but only increasing. Well. Wasn't it so? For the good, you have helped yourself, got saved, and next to you, of course. thousands of people get saved, those who really want it and sincerely crave it. Because people do feel. What's interesting is that the tools were given at all times exactly for avoiding this battle. But at the times when there was a lack of knowledge, you would probably also read this literature and wouldn't see these tools, would get confused and lost in that. 
Yet, how great it is to read when you already have some experience and when there is knowledge. Well, it's clear. When you are already familiar and forearmed, you understand what those very saints were talking about yes. and everything else. Where they were walking the path and where the system turned them around and, where, and confused them. Yes, and where there are plain boasters who emulated, were engaged in simony, right? It's also interesting that they wrote about this initial stage of formation, that at the initial stage a monk must reject thoughts and dreams, and in what way, without debating or talking to them? Well, naturally, this experience speaks of what we have been saying many times. Yes. But then again, would a demon let even Christians, who were familiar with this, compare the Alatra knowledge to the experience of these really spiritually free people who were learning it? Of course not. Until the person himself becomes freer, then he sees it all, he sees these parallels, that the path is one, as it turns out. The path to God is one indeed. It is one wide road you can walk. And everyone passes approximately the same milestones, right? Sure. And there is no other road. There are plenty of ways to the road, but the road is one. Anyway, it all will be with the same experiences, the same practices, with all the same, whatever they are called. Here again, Igor Mikhailovich, standing also was mentioned, but in what sense? That if we don't stand, the enemy side us rises. And this standing in the truth, this concept is just a bit distorted in the modern world. But again, standing in the truth, defending the truth is your firm belief, your loyalty, it's your choice, right? Well, we can call it differently, but the essence is one. If you love God, love and don't betray Him. And that's the point, not to be a traitor, not to be a liar before God and yourself. This is what standing is. And not to accept the satanic mindsets, because they are indeed false, they lead solely to bad things. God is in the midst of her and shall not move. I recall this, what was written about Virgin Mary, that such such a great inner power. And it is also described how to actually achieve this state. And they say that, indeed, one constantly needs, in a disciplined manner, to direct absolutely all one's attention precisely to the inner, as if there were a lot of scattered rays of one's soul. So one needs to gather them into one and constantly. But what is it again? This is also transferred by means of associations, that which we call attention and so on, transfer of the knowledge of one's experience. But what were they looking for? They were looking for examples in something visible and understandable, in order to reach people even through consciousness. Well, this understanding did come to them, thank God. But how to convey it to others? So, they started to explain at the elementary level. About the key point that consciousness wants to relax and thinks, for example, that there will definitely be some allowances. Yet the saint's experience shows that the further one goes, the more diligent and stronger one's concentration of attention gets, that this is really, as you said, there is no other thing. The main task of a person in this life is to constantly redirect it. And the path is one. After all, there is no God in the external. He is within a person. In the external there is an illusion, while God He's inside. Isn't this what the prophets were talking about? It is. But, excuse me, the devil also stands between personality and soul. Consciousness stands on this road. But the road still exists. That, which has been called the silver thread since the beginning of time. So nothing is a hindrance. Even the devil is no obstacle. Nothing is an obstacle if a person really wants this. If this is the purpose of his life. If he is spiritually free enough to understand it. But if he is, excuse me, under the system's heel, how will he understand it? He won't. Because a slave can understand that he is a slave only by looking from a side at what slavery is. While if he was born in this system, if he lives in it, just like everyone does, then he remains a slave like everyone else. It's a normal way of life for him. Consciousness dictates, he executes. But how come? After all, consciousness is me. Because people associate themselves with consciousness. Well… Like all do. 
the key point, like all do, along the same route. And, unfortunately, where did this understanding already get into? Into religions and all the rest. After all, even if we revere the Holy Fathers, then again, they were writing about their thoughts that should be concentrated and invested. Well, that's how they express their attention, right. meaning what we now call attention, different ways to convey and different interpretations. Yes, but this path certainly cannot be followed without experience which is gained by overcoming. And, let's say, there are such temptations from the system that occur and turn a person away from the spiritual path, and this one of those is exactly pointed out to be these false visions, when a person wants so much to feel like he is chosen by God, that he doesn't want to give up such a thing as false vision, which has ruined a lot of men of faith who followed the spiritual path. Well, certainly. Again, it's not a person who wants it, but a demon who imposes that. A demon tells him about his exclusiveness and chosenness, and the person believes demons' fairy tales. But when someone tells him the opposite, he resents it. And again, where does he invest his attention? In the demon's resentment. Right. But how is that? Making it stronger. I am spiritual, after all. Of course. Self-conceit, stupidity and all the rest. So? Well, this is a frequent occurrence. But then again, why? Because a person is deceitful. A demon in him is deceitful. And the one who invests attention in lies is deceitful too. Isn't that so? Because he's exactly that demon. What a person invests his attention into is what he is. Consciousness deceives that you have allegedly reached the goal, yes, meaning the set one. But as long as you are in this three-dimensionality, it's a constant process well, for sure. achieving this goal, which is being complicated by the system, by the devil. Again, what's interesting is that false gifts were also these obstacles and temptations on the path, like a gift of healing, which people really wanted, a gift of some foresight, that's it. And let's put it honestly, okay? So many people came to Alatra to gain the gifts, the gifts of power. Let's say, to gain potency or something else. But once they realized that they wouldn't get anything here but hard work on themselves, because it's really hard to work on oneself, to resist Satan within oneself. So they ran away frustrated. But for what reason? Exactly this gift. Not the gift, but the desire for this… What did Satan come for? Yes. For the tools. For that very power over others. For a little demon to become a bit bigger. What does he need? He needs the tools. To grow the bigger one. To grow his… yes. To have a position in his demonic hierarchy above the others. Well, that's what they came for. Well. Fortunately, there are few of such people. It is beneficial for the system to cultivate stronger demons, meaning… Well, the system doesn't care at all, let's say. Lucifer doesn't care. Let him play, Let yes. the demons play, as long as they fight among themselves. The more they fight, the more effort they put in. The more effort they put in, the more trophies, let's say, they bring, right? To the system itself. Well, everything as usual. Let's put it this way. The better a person's business goes, the more taxes the government receives from him. Well, this is to make it clear. It seems that… Of course, this is beneficial. Yes. It's also interesting that they describe that the greatest probability of these thoughts coming from the system is while a person is in a state of peace, as they write. And this state of peace, what was the true meaning of it? Does it mean inaction? A state of peace? Well, there can be no state of inaction at all. People may have hallucinations, when there is supposedly some kind of inaction and peace. But thoughts are telling him in his head. A demon is sitting there and whispering in his head that you are at peace. Look, you don't have a single thought. Wait, but if someone is telling you that you don't have a single thought, do you really have no single thought in your head? And who is talking? Just a simple question. The demon is a beast that is never silent. Sorry, but it's evaluating everything all the time, rummaging through everything. It's constantly chewing. There is such a mouse, I forgot what it is called, a small one. If it doesn't eat anything for 15 minutes, it will die. It has such a crazy metabolism. Yes, that trust can true. Well, the demon is even worse. The shrew cannot stop eating for 15 minutes, while this one cannot be silent for 5 seconds. It still pulls, it still moves. But it will create an illusion of peace for you. 
that you are sitting, you have no thoughts, you have an expanded consciousness, and you perceive the whole universe. Who in you is perceiving the whole universe, my friend? All the planets have feet in your mind. Isn't this a thought? And the thought isn't necessarily words and fuss. A thought is images. A thought is three-dimensional pictures. Yet, can it actually give any other pictures, two-dimensional and three-dimensional? This is all that it feeds you with from morning till night. But most importantly, what is missing? This inner love is missing, of course. God's love, peace and freedom are missing. And freedom from whom? Freedom precisely from this dictatorship is missing. Happiness is missing, right? Happiness is missing. And this is what's most important. And what is happiness? Happiness is exactly God's love. And the more of it comes to you, the more happiness you have, my friend. While everything else in earthly affairs is fleeting. Just like that very Olympic champion, he got onto the podium, received a medal, they raised the flag and played the anthem for him. Everyone applauds. Is this happiness or not? No, my friends, this is not happiness. This cannot be happiness, because it lasts a very short period of time. This is the result of his work. This is his salary, which ends as quickly as any other salary, but not more. Whereas happiness, it either exists or doesn't exist. But in order to have it, it is necessary to work, otherwise you will never have it. And everything else is illusions. Also, Igor Mikhailovich, in order for happiness not to end, there is such a question from the guys who watched our programs. And so they describe that every time after the program they feel a tremendous upsurge of feelings, and it seems that it will never end, but… It ends immediately. It ends. And there is constantly this wave-like nature of this process. Well, of course. Yes, and so they… This is precisely the swings described by those very saints, naturally. The first period is the period of making a choice, and the weak one surrenders. He falls under the dictation of Satan, yes, into service, into slavery. Whereas the one who is strong, the one who is honest, let's say, spiritually strong, not physically, and the one who is honest and not lying, that one attains freedom and everything else. Well, isn't it so? It is. After all, that very Jesus Christ came here, a woman gave birth to him, sorry, he walked his life path, and he had to go through this and see, is anything a hindrance or not? Can a human achieve spiritual liberation while being in different conditions of life? A human can do it, since he was able to go through it all. Yes. Because he was resisting Satan, resisting his temptations too. How can it be otherwise? Right. The devil becomes nothing for the one who truly loves, yes. Of course. And excuse me, the last prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, was it easy for him? It wasn't. But why some people can, while others cannot? Everyone can. Everyone can. Every single one can, yes. Right. But that one reaches who is honest, first and foremost. To remove doubts in the head and precisely in love. And whom are the doubts coming from? Of course, the devil trusts that. From the devil, of course. And the devil immediately seeks to save his own kind, right? That is, the devil fights for his imps, and actively imposes stupidity on everyone. And here, Igor Mikhailovich, is it possible to recommend to people, to our viewers, some… they are asking perhaps for some tool that will help them get out of such periods of internal decline, which comes in waves. Yes, guys, well, this is easy. Why reinvent the wheel when it exists, right? How can you help yourself? Of course, you can watch a program over again, you can do something else, but consciousness actually denies me denies what I'm saying. As long as a person is listening, he feels. As long as he is open, he feels. Consciousness still sways, but the angel does feel. Certainly, this is helpful, thank God, but for those who want and who perceive. Yet, if the devil is strong, a person won't even be able to feel, will he? The devil hides from you, he attracts the entire attention to himself, he is raging and being indignant at that time. However, if a person is striving, he will still gain this perception through feelings. While those who do feel, they have felt, they have opened up, they've got filled, filled with that inner love. This gives some time of protection against this demon. He becomes weaker. And here, indeed, people feel the boundlessness, 
and they understand that it is forever, right? But then time passes, and Satan tempts and distracts them. And the person feels that he is again in slavery, he is dependent, and he has to fight, there is an inner discomfort. He performs some practices, he is fighting, and he again gets out of the state, he again gains this feeling of joy and love, that is, a response. He begins to love God sincerely, rejecting all of Satan's arguments. And what does he get in return? Only love. Because God is loving towards those who love Him. And the search takes place again. However, time passes, Satan tempts, and the person gets distracted again. So, what should you do in order to help yourself somehow? You should use that which the system has invented for enslaving you guys, meaning modern gadgets. You take a gadget, record yourself when you feel inspired. After all, no one knows you better than yourself. And you make a selfie addressed to yourself because you know that you will fall after a while. If you are not a liar, you do know that you experience this repeatedly, and you are now feeling an upsurge. There is a spiritual surge now, so describe it, tell yourself about it, give yourself a hand. And so, next time when the system has made you fall, you just turn it on. The system will tell you, no, don't turn it on, it won't help. It will help, my brother, it will. Turn it on and listen to yourself attentively, and listen carefully to that inner response, and it will come without fail. This is the simplest method. And why not use the tools that are available? It was harder in the past. Well, the system has actually become lazier. It started developing various technologies. This is really a tool for enslavement. How much time does it take away from people? Plenty. However, the same tool can be directed against the system as well, right? To help oneself. To help oneself and to help other people by using all these tools. You will help yourself, understand how to do that, tell others how to do that. Everything is simple. Share your experience, true experience, just like the true people of faith whom we have mentioned. A person resonates the best with himself and he will feel that which… For sure, of course. He will intensify his own state, that which was at that moment. Very simple and very easy. And here the trouble is that even consciousness has sort of no arguments. It itself… It has nothing to trumpet with. Yes, exactly personality has all the trumps in this case. This is simple. Igor Mikhailovich, you've told about such a good experience and proposed such an option to guys of how to really overcome these periods of their downturn, of how it creeps in. Well, this is simple and effective. Right. And it's interesting that, still going back to, they have found the recluse. And do you know what is interesting? Mention of such people as Theophan the recluse is blissful. Why? Because remembering a person who is really not in this world feels one, instead of Robin. While false saints, whom people pray to, they are, pardon me, in hell. Meaning, those very sub-personalities are wandering among people somewhere, and they are exactly the ones who rob people. That is, especially if we know their image, their name, if we ask them for something and direct our attention to them. This makes their lives easier. We have talked about this more than once already. However, this empties a person himself and strengthens the demon in you. Remembering these spiritual people, yes, but without an image. Yes, this is such an important, let's say, topic. Well, maybe someday we will elaborate on it more, if it is of interest to our friends. Okay, returning to Theophan the Recluse, it's interesting what he said. He said that a person, this is basically the other side of people, does not change because he doesn't know that he should change. So he said that a person doesn't see his state because he doesn't feel the danger of his position, he doesn't feel the danger he is in, and therefore is not concerned with getting rid of it. And this very… This happens far and wide. After all, so many people live like everyone else. They are worried about, excuse me, worldly lives. Just the usual fuss. And they don't even understand that they are ill, terminally ill. And this is true. Well, again, consciousness doesn't let them take a step towards their own salvation. This is 
This is a serious problem. Well, my friends, this is exactly what you are here for. So that having understood the very essence of human purpose, why he is here, to explain it to others too. One mustn't influence the choice of a person, but one can explain. After all, Satan doesn't force anyone to do anything either, he suggests. But when a person doesn't distinguish himself from the demon inside, he does as the demon whispers to him. After all, it's not the demon who is doing that, it is you who are doing it. You get angry, you insult, you kill, you rob, you steal. Well, isn't that so? It is. But the demon merely suggests. Mm -hmm. This is interesting, yes. Of course. However, you can also resist it to offer to people, to tell them. This is precisely one of the forms of deeds. Mm -hmm. When a person acquires this love, well, he can't but share it. That's the point. Igor Mikhailovich, I would also like to just briefly share such an insight in my story, because I actually have been reading about lives of the Holy Fathers since early childhood, and it's amazing that only thanks to the contact with the knowledge, I've started seeing in them what I didn't see and I didn't notice at all before, how the tools are given for getting from under the influence of this consciousness, from this demon in the head. And I would just like to share this with the viewers. You have talked about this a lot and more than once in the programs, but still, maybe it is said in different terms, and there are certainly nuances, some misunderstandings here in the texts. Well, again, why is it so? Due to the fact that these people belonged to a particular religion. They lived by the statutes of that religion, by the experience of other fathers, the saints who learned the same thing through their work. Naturally, they told about it from their point of view. While we are telling it simply, we are telling it the same way as, well, I don't know, about everyday life. That is, everything is simple, clear and in its place, well, without any religiosity. Because the spiritual path is not religion. Religion is a set of teachings, knowledge, desires and aspirations. Well, these are the statutes of that organization while spiritual salvation is everyone's work. And the Holy Fathers talked exactly about this too, that… Yes, that's why I thank you very much for this gift, the gift for every person to really have an opportunity to see the truth in those scriptures, in those texts that from century to century were basically given. Well, of course, when you begin to understand, then you see this confirmation everywhere. It turns out, that thousands of years ago and more, people walked the same path. Yes. I would just like to share. I'd like to share the tools that precisely those who practiced told about, those who really fought with the system, those who cultivated inner love in themselves. And it is said that Holy Fathers offered two tools to repel sinful thoughts and daydreaming. The first one is immediate confession, and the second one is an immediate appeal to God. Well, probably only now I understand what it truly means, that, first of all, immediate confession is necessary, meaning this… Not to lie, not to, lie. Not to get lost in the game. Right. When you see that you have gone astray, you have to admit it honestly, first of all, to yourself. And this is what confession is, confession to God. For it doesn't matter if you are standing in front of a person and you are confessing to him. First of all, you have to confess to yourself, because it is yourself you are confessing to, and not to a person who doesn't care a whit about you, who has dozens of other people like him, Ahead. like you, right, who has to say, I absolve you of your sin or something else. No. He can neither take it on nor absolve it from you. This is your action, and you should confess to yourself, understand, and realize that you have gone astray, that you have been seduced. Isn't it so? Honestly, yes. And what is the next step? One should return to God's love. Return into feelings to God. Absolutely right. Isn't this what they were talking about? Yes. And here, also regarding 
what you've said about the fact that one shouldn't analyze while in this state, when a person is under the system's attack. And who analyzes? Yes. Well, who actually analyzes? Again, those very demons, right? And I've also come across that one shouldn't get into natural reasoning during an attack of evil forces. But the first thing to do is to pray and then to exhaust the body through labor. That's right. Isn't this what we have been talking about? Literally, in the previous program also. When too much attention is paid to consciousness, it begins to misbehave, it begins to distract you, and so on. Why does this happen? Due to idleness. When it falls into idleness, what should be done? One should reduce the attention limit and force it to study, to take action, to work, so that consciousness would be doing something in the first place. We then talked about learning another language, yes. Chinese. Well, Chinese is appropriate for us. For Chinese people, let's say, Russian is appropriate, right? Well, this is practically the same. These are the two most difficult languages in the world. Yes, to make the flesh work, right? Of course, the flesh must work, and consciousness must work, surely. It is exactly in this idleness and laziness that the system manifests itself. And is begotten. And is begotten. Yes, and Satan's power is begotten. But again, People who live, well, as it is said, by the pleasure of the body and mind, they don't live after all. They are in an illusion, just like those characters in a computer game. But can a person still… And this all passes, and passes very quickly. Yet, anyway, every person still feels that he is in this illusion, sort of. Everyone feels. Even atheists feel that they are in an illusion. But what do they say? They agree that, yes, there is some kind of a universal mind. Well, they describe the system. Again, they don't lie. They speak the truth. But their God is Satan. And so they describe him. There is an absolute, a universal mind, which is… which we merge with. That is exactly like every gaming addict defends his position, meaning… Absolutely right. Yes, it's also interesting that it is said Satan has a single concern that what a person is completely occupied with, where his consciousness, attention and heart are, would be not God solely and exclusively, but something outside of him, so that by clinging to it with his mind, will and heart, the person would have this in place of God and would be concerned only with this, would explore this, would enjoy and possess this. These are not only carnal and mental passions, but also species things such as learnedness, artistry and worldliness that can serve as the bonds of Satan for keeping blinded sinners in his power and not letting this them come to their senses. About, right? What is your goal? If the meaning of a person's existence is just in his learnedness and not in life, then this is precisely, again, service to whom? To Satan. Well, isn't that so? Yes. And what does this learnedness give? No, guys, knowledge should be developed. And you should learn, no question about it. You simply shouldn't forget who you are in reality and not in an illusion. And then education will only be of help. Whereas if a person boasts of his learnedness, all this just strengthens Satan's power over him. Nothing else. Well, then he reasonably argues with the help of that very demon. Give me proof of God. If you give it to me, then I will believe in him. You will believe, my friend, and much faster than it seems to you. Life is very short. And after it, no one doubts the existence of God anymore. And so the system stops a person in this internal development and aspiration by telling him that you are already good enough for me. This is exactly, you know, such a phrase from the system. Of course. It also raises pridefulness. You are already so spiritual, you already know everything, and sometimes you have even learned every comma. Yet, what did Jesus Christ say about the scribes and Pharisees? The other experience is important. Of course. The inner one. You may not know a single letter, yet gain freedom and life. Because knowing signs and symbols doesn't guarantee you spiritual salvation. However, if you don't know God's love, 
than whatever you may know. You will never become that which you must become. Become alive. Isn't this right? But, unfortunately, Satan in your head says otherwise. He says that you should gain, you should achieve, you should prove. Whom should you prove it to? And what should you prove? You don't owe anything to anyone, my friend. The maximum that you should do in this life is for yourself not to prove, but to gain life. Whereas to prove that you are alive? Well, this is stupid. How can you prove something that is not there? If you try to prove that you are alive, it means you are not alive. Isn't it so? You are not living. And how can you live and it's really so. if you are controlled by the dead? And the one who is truly in life, in communication with God? Of course. Yes. That one doesn't demand anything. He's, he's happy. And happiness doesn't require any proof, because it just is. Whereas if there is no happiness or this happiness is false, and false happiness is the one that passes quickly. It is… Life, happiness, love are those things which… they are either there or they are not. And if we try to call something by some name, well, we can play with words, but if we call a mouse an elephant, it won't become bigger because of that. It will remain a mouse, just as it has been, even though its nickname will be elephant. By the way, we have touched upon the topic of nicknames and names, right? Not many people know that personality doesn't have a name. Please tell us. And doesn't react to the nickname which we are taught from childhood. It's our consciousness that reacts to this, meaning our little imp. That's who has the nickname of your name. But we can talk about this in another program. It's not today's topic. By the way, Again, for those who live by the mind as proof, we have already mentioned it and talked about it, it's easy to substitute human consciousness, banal hypnosis and everything else. However, personality finances both third forces and subpersonalities that can be very active and make substitutions. Again, what do they substitute? A person's secondary consciousness, right? But in this case, when consciousness is substituted, again, personality perceives itself the way which was imposed on it by that very hypnologist, or by third forces, or by a subpersonality. It's all the same for personality if it's not developed, while if it is developed, if it is free, then it's impossible to make a substitution. If a person controls his own consciousness, he controls the entire invisible world, meaning it's no longer dangerous for him and no magic works, and no, pardon me, candex. No hypnotists can influence him. It's also interesting regarding what you've said, that no magic works, and those who really, truly gain life. Gain life. It's just that the Holy Fathers spoke exactly about the fact that but they were already talking about the end times when it was mentioned. There would not be such miracles. Thousands of miracles as were performed in the times of the Apostles, meaning such as resurrection of one's body, some supernatural phenomena that were performed by the Holy Fathers, that the time will come when those who follow the path of salvation will in no way differ from others in appearance, except for the fact that this living spark will remain inside them. Life will be in them. Alatra will be in them. That is God's love. So, my friends, let's live. Live with love for each other. Thank you.